Number eight, integrated concepts. When kicking a football, the kicker rotates his leg about the hip joint. Letter A, if the velocity of the tip of the kicker shoe is 35 meters per second and the hip joint is 1.05 meters from the tip of the shoe, what is the shoe tip's angular velocity? So, got a little picture over here. Here's the, uh, here's the kicker's leg and there's his shoe. And he's going to rotate right his leg around the hip joint. I chose to uh, denote that that little point there is the hip. And when he does so, right, he creates some angular velocity. We don't know what it is. That's what the question's asking. But we do know that the velocity at the tip of the shoe is 35 meters per second. So we have to figure out how to relate this distance, which, by the way, is a what? Well, it's a radius, right? Because think about this. The the leg is rotating around a certain point, and when something rotates around a point, what shape does it create? It looks like a, a mix, but my picture looks like a mix between a square and a circle, but uh, trust me, it just creates a, a circle, all right? So um, realizing that, knowing that that's a radius, now I can think about thinking that this is R, all right? So I need to come, uh, not come up, but I need to f identify a formula that relates Radius, velocity, and angular velocity. We have it over here on the right-hand side, right? V is equal to R omega. So solve this for omega. So just divide both sides by R. So omega becomes, which is the angular velocity, right? Velocity over um, the radius. So now simply plug in the values, make sure uh, everything is in meters per second and uh, yeah, and meters for the, for the radius. So we get 35.0 all over 1.05. And the angular velocity is, so 35 divided by 1.05, whoops, 35 divided by 1.05, 33.3. Right, so we get 33.3 radians. These are always the standard units that come out of this formula, radians per second. All right, that is omega. Okay, so that takes care of letter A, easy peasy. Letter B. The shoe is in contact with the initial stationary 0.5 kilogram football for 20 milliseconds. What average force, oh no, average force, is exerted on the football to give it a velocity of 20 meters per second? All right, so this goes, uh, this is a little throwback to kind of last chapter and the chapter before, right? So um, how are we going to figure this out? So we know that it's initially stationary. So we know the initial velocity of this thing is going to be zero. We also know that the final velocity of this uh, uh, football will be 20 meters per second. We don't know, though, at what angle, right? It'll probably be at some angle. We just don't know what it is. Um, they also told us the mass of the football. They said that the mass is 0.500 kilograms. They did tell us the time in which the contact was made, right? So they gave it to us, though, in milliseconds, 20.0 milliseconds. Remember, I, I need this, though, in seconds, okay? So we just convert it right away, just move the decimal three places to the left. So it becomes 0 0.002. No, 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 one too many zeros. Two, zero, zero. There we go. That's in seconds, right? Because if I move it three places the other way, it becomes 20. So that works. And, um, yeah, right, and they want us to calculate force. Okay, so the first thing is start off with force. How do you how do you calculate force, right? You know that force is some of the, you know that the, the formula for force, sorry, is some of the forces in the x or y direction will equal ma x or y. Okay, so I need to know in order to find... Um, in order, sorry, in order to find average force, I better know the mass and the acceleration. So I do know the mass, that takes care of that, but I don't know the acceleration right off the bat. So how do you suppose I find that? Well, now we have to think back to kinematics. Okay, so now the question reverts. I don't care about force anymore because I know as, as long as I can find acceleration, I can find force. So now my focus turns to how do I find, for, uh, how do I find acceleration? So you know the initial velocity, you know the final, and you know the time. So remember this formula, right? That the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So now all we have to do here is plug this in. So it's 20, 20.0 equals zero plus the acceleration, which is the unknown, multiplied by my time of 0.0200. So obviously simply divide this side out by point, 
uh, 0, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 2, 0, 0. And we simply now get the acceleration. So it'd be 20 divided by 0 0.02, and we get a value of 1,000. So 1,000 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration. Now we can take this and plug it on in. And now we can finally find the force, right? So the average force here should simply be the mass, which was 0.500 kilograms, multiplied now by the 1,000 meters per second squared. And when we do that, just simply move the decimal three places to the right, so it become 500 newtons. Easy enough. So that is the average force. Okay, so that sounds great. And now, letter C. We now, let's take a read over the question. It says, find the maximum range of the football neglecting air resistance. All right, I'm going to do this, I think, in the upper left-hand corner. So now to find uh, maximum range, we have to remember, well, wait a minute. Do I, I don't even know what angle the ball is being kicked at. Okay, well, we don't need to necessarily because this part should be memorized. You have to remember that the maximum range of any projectile, because that's essentially what the problem has become, is always going to be 45 degrees. All right, that'll, that is the angle that will achieve maximum range. So this is really the question in setting it up. This is 45. This velocity here is 20 meters per second. And it's going to travel, right, blah, 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 land somewhere over here. And we have to now find the range. So we have to find, right, whatever this, um, whatever this x value is in here. Okay? That total range. So we have to think back to a formula. Do, do we know a simple formula that might be able to help us? And we do, right? We have to remember this. That the maximum range, I put it here as x, but I mean in the formula it was r. It really doesn't matter. Just know that it's the range is equal to the initial velocity of the ball squared, not in the x or y direction, just the overall resultant initial velocity multiplied by the sine of 2 theta, all divided by g. So let's plug it in. The initial velocity here in the problem is 20. Okay, that's going to be squared, multiplied by the sine of 2 times my angle of 45, because that is the angle of maximum range. If you think about when you plug in 45 here and multiply it by 2, it becomes 90, and sine of 90 is going to be 1. And that's the maximum sine can ever achieve, so that's why it works out mathematically. So divided by 9.8. So when we do all this wonderful stuff, it's basically just 20 squared divided by 9.8. And we get 40.8. So the answer is 40.8 meters. All right? So this is now an integrated question, right? We're going from angular concepts, um, back to forces, back to kinematics. And this is how, you know, most of the questions will begin to progress now where uh, we're going to be looking at multiple concepts all in the same question. So, um, you know, make sure you have a formula sheet. Actually, what we'll do on our website, glazertutoring.com, um, making a comprehensive um, formula sheet. I have one already, but this textbook uses uh, formulas slightly different. So I'm just trying to uh, make it similar to what you're seeing in your uh, textbook. And I'll post it on there. You guys can feel free to download it. It'd be like under a free resource section. Um, always keep the formulas handy so you have them. All right. And then by virtue of doing enough practice, which you should be doing, you'll just kind of just begin to memorize them without having to sit there and actually memorize them. All right. So again, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and I will see you or talk to you or teach you and help you in the next lesson. Take care.